My name is Melissa Shabloon, and I'm a social worker here at Centro. And I have been providing individual individual therapy now for about 10 years in a few different organizations. And the reason that we're here to talk to you is to bring forth some ideas that have developed about how to integrate mental health therapy with traditional forms of healing. Um, I'll give you a little bit of the background of how I stumbled upon this, and I don't think I was the first person to do so by any means, um, but just how I was able to see how I could integrate it into my work. Um, so within the therapy that I've been providing for uh, the Latino community, I often found that we could get to a certain point with talk therapy, and it was helpful, and it was beautiful, and a lot of times it was, uh, people were able to find new meaning to their trauma history. They were able to put new relationships develop new relationships with that trauma history, but sometimes we could only reach a certain point, and then it, we found that it was almost stuck in their body, like the trauma of, of what they experienced was in their body still, and they couldn't bring meaning to what that was about. So I had been looking for different ways to address that, talking about acupuncture or um, different energy work or massage or meditation. Um, sometime later, I ended up at Rebecca's house and I uh, was introduced to her by a few healers that had come to Centro for a traditional healing event and I ended up having some of my own work done uh, with Rebecca and was amazed at the profound impact it had on my life and I started to think about, I had thought about it before but really it became very clear to me how powerful the work that she does. Um, and I have had a hard time explaining it, what it is, which is Rebecca will be able to explain it a little bit better. But what I've seen with the clients that I have worked with is that it helps them integrate their trauma history into a way that is empowering to them. It's still there. It's not deleted. Um, but they're able to find this spiritual sense of meaning for it. Um, and that was what happened with me too. Um, I, I, I didn't necessarily understand the connection that I had with my ancestors or how that had played a role in my life and how the traumas of my past had still lived in my daily interactions. And it brought so much insight to me, which was so powerful. And I have seen that happen now numerous times with the clients that I serve, that I've um, been working with Rebecca on. Maybe Rebecca can bring some more light into what she sees. So I, um, I'm a family medicine um, doctor trained in this country, although I've lived in Latin America and the Philippines for a good amount of my adult life. So uh, I always went between living in different cultures and also living in different world views. Um, in terms of understanding the cause and effect, the context of disease and health. And I think that the training, and I've been trained both in a Peruvian healing uh, modality as well as a Mayan. Um, so I combine the two. So the way that I can explain what I do in, in combining the Mayan and the Peruvian modalities, and again, these are traditional um, healing modalities of those cultures, um, is that it's, it's an approach to, um, to interact, to healing human beings um, by working with the concept of soul and spirit. And this, the way that I can sum it up is, is um, an experience I had in San Cristobal, Chiapas, um, during a conference where traditional midwives were talking about their methods of healing um, and the, the difficulty they were having with the medical system and being, um, being supported by the medical system there. A young man, a total man who's probably 20, 21, stood up and said, the doctors cannot see our soul or our spirit. They only treat us 
as physical beings. They do not, they can't see our soul and spirit. And it was a commentary by this very young man, not just about the doctors and chapas, it was really about, you know, modernity. And then how we, in, in the medical field, have reduced um, our beings into molecules, in a sense. And in a sense, sanctified that, um, saying that any, any symptom you have must, must fit in within our limited paradigm of understanding reality as something we can reduce into molecules. So the other piece of this, um, the traditional medicine is really ancient. It precedes allopathic medicine. And it's really about looking at how we as human beings are more than our molecules in a sense, that we have ancestors, that we have experiences, that those experiences live within us. Um, that we have strengths that we don't know about. We have attachments to maybe other people, maybe ancestors, um, maybe ideas, maybe obsessions that also inform and, and in some ways can cause us to feel tremendous amount of, of pain and experience disease. And so this modality is is something it's it is a modality that really addresses the whole person in that sense so when i'm working with a kenyan woman with tremendous pelvic pain and it really is about her um, break with her ancestors then uniting her with the, her ancestors then takes away that pain i can't explain why it just for her that was what her story was and that's what she needed was that reconnection for her to heal, for her body to heal. Um, or when somebody comes um, with a story of trauma and the, and the lack of a mothering figure, but then is able to, to really derive a, some, a tremendous amount of strength through her connection with the Virgin de Guadalupe, which is a very strong maternal um, earth figure of Latin America. That is, a, that is something that also can allow her to heal her motherlessness um, and go forward. Um, so many of these, this modality is really a remembrance of healing as it was before allopathic medicine really, and West, the Western world really became dominant in this world. And it has gifts that we've forgotten, certainly in the West, um, but it also challenges the paradigm of how we understand reality. And just because the people who hold the remembrance of that paradigm, many of them are indigenous and don't read and write, doesn't mean that they don't have an incredible gift for humanity that we, with many degrees and many years of school behind our back, um, don't have. And it's hard to accept sometimes I think in our cultures, first certainly in medicine, to think that somebody who doesn't have the, the diplomas that we have can ha contribute something to the world and can contribute something to understanding healing and contribute something to humanity is a bit um, culturally racist, that it must come from those of us who have degrees. So it's so this is just an example of us coming together and using Western ways and other ways and, bring, and melding them together, using the capacity of human beings to really understand and cognitively understand what's going on and recreate meaning, but also to help the soul and spirit heal as well. So like I had mentioned, sometimes when I'm working with people, even for a number of years, I've had a few clients that have been coming to me for a number of years. And since I've met Rebecca, and I, I work a lot with women who, mostly women, with complex trauma. So severe childhood abuse that then pans out to be domestic violence or multiple rapes. Um, and I have found that we reach a certain place with the individual therapy. Some people, that has been enough for them maybe. <laughs> um, but since I've met Rebecca, those people that have expressed to me interest in something more, um, where I can see that they have a spiritual awareness that I think could be 
compatible with what Rebecca does, I have decided to refer to her. Mm -hmm. um, and even some new clients, you know, not necessarily people that have been long-term clients. And what they have, the feedback that they have given me has been incredible. Um, so I can think of a few cases of severe childhood sexual abuse and which had the guilt and shame and isolation that existed even after processing that in talk therapy was so deep and I couldn't access it. I couldn't change it. I couldn't help them change it. <laughs> uh, once they were able to go with Rebecca, it is though as she helped lift that shame out in a way or brought it to attention in a more somatic format. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And they were able to come back with me and then process that. So it it's been it was profound and I'm still trying to find out as you can tell, I'm still trying to find the words to how to explain that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. what what cause mm -hmm. it, what happens I think is that you also have a relationship with these women that many times you're the first person they've ever told. Yeah, most of the women they've never, they're, they're, even into their 60s, they have never shared their rape with anyone. Or they've never shared that abuse history with anyone. So they feel safe enough for, with you yeah. to be able to bring it up into their consciousness and say this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And so when they come with me, then they're able to, she's normalized, you've normalized that ability to say this is what happened. Mm -hmm. So if they can consciously hold that experience um, and the emotions around that experience, then that's what I can work with to help take how that lives in their body out of their body and or, or, or change it in some way. So it helps. Some of, sometimes you never get to that, and it's all going to be unconscious work. Um, but when it's conscious, it's easier to help them make meaning out of it after you've shifted some of that um, trauma out of their body. Yeah. It's something I've also noticed is this self-talk, the inner dialogue that exists within us. And that sometimes I have had clients that are able to identify whose dialogue that is. That's mothers, that's grandmothers, that was my father's, that was my ex-husband's. Um, the work with Rebecca, it was almost like, what do we call it? An ins extraction. An ancestral extraction. As though they're able to let, first of all, bring awareness to that that voice exists in them and that they have a choice to let that go. So mother telling me I'm a dirty little slut no longer has to exist. Or somebody, my, my father telling me I'm tainted or damaged for the rest of my life. My husband telling me I'm worthless. That doesn't have to exist in me anymore, but Rebecca can bring it to a whole different level of where she can actually just card it. <laughs> Ceremonially mm -hmm. extract it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it helps to, for for them energetically it's easier to work with if they're if if which what you're doing, um, making it making the pattern you're kind of highlighting the pattern and it's easy to capture and then take out. And I don't think that many people that do my kind of work are able to work with somebody who's, who's able to, again, bring that to the consciousness and, and have the person recognize that. Right. And even if we recognize it, we can't, often we can't do anything about it, but if at least they can recognize it, then it's easier for me to track and say, okay, now I know how to take yeah. it out. Right. I think you had said, a, you said, I'm able to open the book and then you read it. I think one thing about protection. There was a there was so there was a client that we worked with together mm -hmm. who her trauma history no one should have to experience what this woman experienced. Um, and she 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 did amazing work. We did amazing work and we've been together for I think about two years. And she has really progressed. However, she is terrified. Um, her ex husband is uh, still making threats from their home country uh, to kill her and her children. Um, she is terrified still. Mm -hmm. And when she went to Rebecca recently, um, they were able to access a level of spirituality for her that was a form of protection, which was the Guad power. The Guad power, Guadalupe. Yes. <laughs> and 
The last time I saw her, she sat in session and cried, but in a very healing way that she said, I feel like Guadalupe's always been with me. And she said, now, now I get it, and I, I feel like my husband won't, my ex-husband won't be able to hurt me. So it's just a, a different level of protection and safety that I could have said to her maybe all day, but until she had that experience, it didn't resonate with her. It wasn't as powerful, and so the work together then made it so that this woman now feels that she can go to sleep at night without being terrified that she's going to be killed and her children. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and that's just an example of it's there for her, but all I'm doing is, is helping her explore a different relationship um, with, with, um, with the Virgin of Guadalupe that's always been important to her. What, where, what's the what's the breadth of that relationship? What can that relationship be for you? And so, yeah, she tapped into that. And that's, I think, another example of like um, the the great gifts of all of these cultures coming here, and then and then really um, being able to see the the colorfulness and. Um, the capacity of um, joy and spirituality and gifts and a different world view um, that is all about um, it is all about health in the, in the global sense that we understand it so